Hey there, and welcome to the last of my nine video series discussing what kind of life path number are you? So today we're going to be exploring the number nine life path number. There's various ways you can be a nine life path number. It's not enough to say, I'm a life path number nine anymore. Let's find out what kind of a life path number nine are you? And how do we actually figure that out? So first of all, I want to talk about some calculation methods. There's two examples I'm using here. One is March 25th of 1959. This is my date of birth. And when we add up all of the numbers in that date of birth, it adds up to 34 and 3 and 4 equal 7. So the numbers that we add up to our final number, which is our main lesson, those are what we call sub-lessons. And this whole number is referred to as a composite life path number. Okay, so if this in fact was my life path number, it would mean that I've agreed to come to learn the lessons, the sub lessons related to the number three, which is all about learning how to express yourself, learning how to not be quite so self critical, learning how to uh, express yourself in a creative way and have a bit of a sense of humor. The four relates to stability, process, focus, one step after the other, you know, just being very um, much a builder, if you will. I've got all those things, guys. I didn't need to learn that. That I was pretty sure of, which caused me to go looking for a different method. And that's when I learned the method over here that was related to the teachings of Matthew Oliver Goodwin. Now, when we do it Matthew's way, we break down each piece of the date of birth independently. So in this case, we have March. So March is a three, it's a single digit, leave it as a three. The 25th day, add that together, two and five equals seven. 1959, add all the numbers up, comes to 24 and two and four equals six. Now we're gonna to add together all of those reduced numbers. So three plus seven plus six equals 16 and one and six equals seven. So this is a very different life path number to what the 34 seven is. Okay, we're still sevens, right? Either way you do it, either way we slice or dice this, we're still sevens. But in this case, this person's learning the sub lessons of the three and the four, which are very different than the lessons of the one and the six. The one says I had to learn independence, leadership, um, creative potential, all those sorts of things. And then we also look at the six, which relates to uh, a need for perfectionism, holding the bar a little too high, and um, learning how to establish a bit more balance in my life, and, and learning how to not take on everybody's responsibility as my own, right? So this makes me the seven that I am today. This is something I could sink my teeth into. This is something I could understand. So for many times, or many years ago, I used to say this is the only way to do the life path number calculation. I'm not saying that anymore. I've mellowed a lot since then. Um, I believe that you have to do the calculation both ways because what's important is not me being right. It's, I can't prove which method is right, nor can somebody prove their method is right. We can't prove it. So the only way that we can be assured that we have the right life path number is if we tap into how it makes us feel. So when I felt into 34-7, I am not that. When I tapped into 16-7, that's a better fit. Okay, so I encourage you to do the same. All right, here are your possibilities on the nine life path number. Are you a straight up nine? Your life path number added up to nine, it's just a straight up nine, that means there's no sub lessons. There's a possibility that you could be that. Are you an 18 nine, which means you'd have the one and the eight sub lesson to overcome so that you can be the best nine that you can be. Are you a 27 nine? Two and seven equal nine, okay? So the two is a different uh, different lesson to what the one is over here. The seven is a different lesson to what the eight is over here. These are very different people, as is the 36 nine. So let's go and explore, explore that. Any way you do this, you're coming up as a nine life path number. So uh, nines are the humanitarians overall. They are the extreme Fixers, you guys just love to jump in with your cape and your tights and swoop in and fix everything. But um, that's because you're empaths, right? You feel everybody's stuff and all you want to do is stop the pain. You just want to help them. You want to fix them. Um, you have a need to be of service to a bigger cause. So for example, the sixes love to be of service, but more so to their home and family and community. The nine says, oh, I have a global interest. I have a, a big interest in being there for everybody. Um, so very charitable, very loving. Um, there's somebody who, they're, they're older souls, very sentimental and traditional. Um, they are people who like to lead by example. They're, uh, as I said, the old souls, but they have lots of integrity, a lot of common sense wisdom. You just feel comfortable um, in, in their, in their um, wake. You know, the, the other thing with the nines is they have a tendency to be really connected to nature. They love to be outside. They have a real concern for the environment, concern for the welfare of people. 
um, animals, wildlife, all that sort of thing. They really feel. Uh, the big lesson here with the nine is learning that you're not intended to fix anything or anyone. You are intended to be the leader who helps people to help themselves. So give people tools. You know, the, the old adage about the um, give a guy a fish and he can eat for a day. Give him a fishing rod and he can fish for his life. That's what the nines are here to do. Hand out a whole bunch of fishing rods. Okay, let's look further. So an 18-9. The lesson closest to the slash is the one that you're going to feel the most, okay? So in this case, in the 18-9, the 8 is the lesson or the sub-lesson that you're going to feel more than you will the 1. But you will feel both of them, and you have to overcome both of them if you can be, if you want to be the best 9 you can be. So the sub-lesson relating to the number 1 is related to developing more confidence, leadership potential, authenticity, creativity, originality. The sub-lesson of the eight is related to issues around abundance and personal power and authority and worthy, worthiness, money issues, basically. 18 nines can be empowered leaders who have a very original idea on how to support humanity, okay? Because the one is all about the originality, the eight is about the empowerment, and the nine is about humanity. So the 18 nines can help others to see their potential, um, and they can assist them in helping others to stand in their own personal power. They love to help out the underdog. That is what the nine is really known for. The 27 nine, very different lessons again. The sub lessons related to the number two. It's not the one anymore. The one was all about them developing confidence and independence. No, the two in this case is about learning how to be patient, diplomatic, learning how to be a partner and a team player, right? And the seven is somebody who's more analytical, overthinks things, um, surrender, needs to learn how to stop overthinking things and surrender and trust to something bigger than themselves. Learning to work in partnership, a team effort, if you will, a collaborative effort, applying spiritual values, that's the seven, with an open heart. The intuitive awareness leads the group to be able to serve a broader cause, which is the ambition of the nine. So very different, right, than the 18 nine. And now we've got the 36-9. So these guys are here to manage the sub-lessons related to the threes, overcoming their fear of self-expression and maybe using some art form to express themselves, music, poetry, writing, public speaking. Um, and the six relates to managing their need for perfectionism, dropping that bar a little bit, teaching other the, others the value of love and acceptance and resisting that need for judgment. And they need to learn to express themselves with sensitivity while maintaining a very balanced sense of responsibility to whatever cause they are drawn to. So I think now I've shown you that there are all kinds of different ways to be a nine life path number. I sure hope that I've uh, piqued your interest and that maybe you'll want to learn a little bit more because I am teaching numerology in the Clarity Seekers community. It's not just about numerology in there, guys. It's about anything related to your spiritual development. We have psychic mediums in there. We have angel card readers. We've got oracle card um, readings every month. We've got live events, master teachers coming in all the time. We're doing meditations. We're doing all kinds of cool stuff. And it is a price that is affordable because I want you have, to be able to have access to me and all the other amazing people in our group. $22 a month. You can cancel any time. I just want you to check us out, right? If you're looking for your community, you're looking for your tribe, you feel like this isn't your planet, you don't fit in, right? You'll fit in with us. I promise you that. So come and check us out. Uh, you can learn more about it at amperinumerologist.com. So for now, I'm hoping that you are having your best day ever. You're creating your best day ever. And that I really look forward to meeting you and talking with you live in the Clarity Seekers community. Hope you're having a great day. Take care and bye for now.